But let's start to get you ready for the Cowboys and the Rams. The Cowboys having come off their bye week at 4-2. and two, Welcome in a Los Angeles Rams team coming off of a curious loss at home to the Pittsburgh Steelers this past weekend in SoFi Stadium. Uh, congratulations to Sean McVay. His uh, first child born, got a first, uh, his first, firstborn son today. There you go. Jordan yeah. John McVay. So, JJ. Didn't he used to have a player? Didn't John Jordan used to play for the Rams? Or does he currently play for the Rams? John Jordan the third, I want to say? Or is that John Johnson? John yeah, Johnson. that's John Johnson. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. I, try, I try to see. I was like, who is, who is Jordan John on the Rams? I, I don't know who that is. Mm-hmm. Well, he's now, um, you know. Congratulations on being a father. That's that's really cool. That's Happy fantastic. for him. You know, his looks like he's going to be all right. He's going to be all right as a dad. You sure? I think so. He seems fairly maniacal about what, his what, what makes What makes you know that someone's going to be a good dad? Like, what are the characteristics uh, that you're looking actually for? Actually, nothing, number one, because they don't send a manual home with them things. Larry would know. He doesn't, you know, they don't send you a manual home with these kids. They just say, here, uh, put them in the car seat and good luck with that. And I'll tell you a quick story. So when mm-hmm. my daughter was born. Yes. Uh you know, she's six now, but we got her in the car. My wife and I, we looked at each other. I was like, okay, now what do we do with this? Uh, and I decided now my house at the time was about 40 minutes away from the hospital. Yes. So my dumb self decided, mm-hmm. I don't know what to do with this thing. So I'm going to take all side streets back home because I don't know how to make sure that my child and myself and my wife, we don't get hurt. Nobody's getting hurt on this ride home. We're going to take all the side streets. Oh, no, that seems fine. That seems fine. Yeah, just- It took us an hour and a half to get home because I decided not to get on the highway because I was deathly afraid of taking my child on the highway for the first time. Yeah, no, you're just first, first time parent, being careful. I understand that. No, that was really kind of dumb, actually. Don't, why why no. was it dumb? Because it took me an hour and a half to get home because I was afraid that I couldn't drive on the highway with my newly born child in the back. Look, man, an hour and a half is is a very, it's just a small price to pay to make sure that the precious cargo is, cargo is safe. Yeah, no, right. no, no. Until okay. you feel comfortable, that's fine. Okay. I know people that still don't drive on the highways at their big age. See, that's but, fine. But here's the part, though. My wife had just had a baby. Oh, she was sick of it. She was ready to she get home. She's All like, right. what the hell are you doing? Get on the highway. No, babe, I'm not getting on the highway. I'm not getting on the highway. Well, you made it. It worked out. It worked out. Hopefully it works out for the Cowboys on Sunday when they take on the Los Angeles Rams. Let's go inside the numbers a little bit as the Cowboys host Sean McVay and the Los Angeles Rams. Rare high, uh, noon game on Sunday. Uh, pre-game begins at 9 a.m. You wanted to say high noon again, didn't you? Uh, I almost did. Mm-hmm, That's a good mm-hmm. TV show. Too bad it got canceled. Was. I know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Shout out to Pablo Torre and Omani Jones. Uh, but let's go inside the numbers a little bit. What are we going to learn about this Rams team as they take on Dallas? On Sunday. Yeah, one thing I try and do is I, you know, just kind of look at various numbers to see if there's anything. Well, obviously, just to inform myself, give myself a little bit more of a base other than just trying to watch as many games as possible, um, especially when it comes to the Cowboys' next opponent, and just trying to get a better feel of what they are bringing to the table. So, um, obviously, y'all know I'm a sucker for some of these uh, advanced analytics. And then also, there's just some more numbers that are at play. So I just kind of wanted to look through some of the stuff and see what we can start to glean. Mm-hmm. Even before we get into like going in and digging into, you know, video and film and stuff of what, what they do. Um, where where do you where would you like to start? DVOA, EPA, which one of those statistics hits you a little bit square? Uh, let's start with Office of DVOA because they've got a nice little receiver these days, uh, Puka Nakua. Uh, for the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, Cooper Cuff is old things, old, old news for you? Old news. Okay. Get him good. out of here. I mean, he's still really good. Don't get me wrong. He's still really good. All right. So offensively, this team um, in DVOA is they are at 14.1% offensive DVOA. And DVOA uh, means is defensive value over a, uh, average or defense adjusted. But either way, it's just an idea of trying to put a metric on what they're capable of. That's right. Um, depending on or irregardless of their opponent, they they rank seventh in offensive DVOA. Okay, that's pretty for Los good. Angeles Rams. Okay, okay, that's pretty good, right? Um, defensive DVOA. This is where it gets a little interesting because this is not a particularly good defensive Los Angeles Rams team. They rank twentieth defensive. DVOA. Oh, okay. Okay. So the basic, the basic uh sketch outline that we're seeing right now. Good offense, not so good defense. Meh defense. Okay. 
okay, so I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Okay, if this Cowboys offense, I mean, you saw some of the plays from Dak Prescott being able to make things happen with his legs a little bit, extend plays on third down. Uh, okay, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Uh, so let's go to, I guess, some more when it comes to the Rams from a, uh, a defensive perspective. Because I want to know from the Cowboys this weekend, is this offense ready to take the next step in the Texas Coast offense? And what does that look like against the Los Angeles Rams on Sunday? Okay, so let's go a little bit more into the defense because I, I now want to give you EPA. Expected points added kind of gives you that general value Per play, in fact. So it's going to be that. And then remember when I talk about success rate, success rate is on any given play, there's a certain amount of yards that you want to get for it to be a success. And that changes depending on the situation. On first and 10, maybe that's four or five yards to be a success. On second and four, that yardage changes. And obviously, a two-yard run in different circumstances means different things. It tries to accomplish that. So that's success rate. But let's start with EPA. Defensively. And obviously, you want this to be as low as possible. The defensive EPA overall for the Los Angeles Rams is negative .012. And obviously, that's not going to mean a lot to you. But what that will, what I will tell you is that ranks them 20th in the league. Okay. So near that bottom third of the league when it comes to EPA. Now, I think what's nice is that they'll break it down into drop back EPA and rush EPR, which basically passing and um, rushing, right? To let you know which one, what they're strong at, what they're not strong at. When it comes to drop back EPA, when it comes to dealing with passing attacks, they rank 17th in the league. When it comes okay. to when it comes to rushing, they rank 21st. Okay, so you can throw the ball a little bit against this defense. You can run the ball a little bit against this defense. Now, here's a number to kind of go with some of that from the Cowboys' perspective when we're talking about not only defensive DVOA, but also defensive EPA as well. Dak Prescott, 72.2%. When opponents are bringing five or more pass rushers, Dak Prescott has completed 39 of 54 passes this season at a 72.2 completion rate against the Blitz. That is third in the NFL. And that's something that he has been really good at throughout the course of his career. He is lethal when you bring extra pressure. That may be something that Sean McVay and his defense looks to stay away from uh, this upcoming weekend against Dak Prescott there. That may make some things a little bit more, um, a little bit more difficult for him to try to make things happen in the middle of the field, which is something that hasn't necessarily happened so far yet this season. Now, when it comes to offense, coming back to EPA, the Rams rank 12th when it comes to passing EPA. They rank fifth when it comes to rushing EPA. So, like, in theory, this is a good rushing team that will then challenge this team's, this Cowboys rushing defense. Now, one of the things that's tough for the Rams is the running back that they basically made their starting running back, Kyron Williams, has gone on to the IR. And so, he he's not available for this game, which means that they're dealing with more of their depth running backs, which I imagine, hey, maybe that does change the way that this goes for them and... If that's going to be probably the chief offensive strength that they have, obviously, and still understanding that Sean McVay can scheme it up and offensively they sure. can still get yards, um, that's going to be an interesting thing to see how they manage. Um, and maybe that is less of a concern for the Cowboys. Obviously, you still want to make sure you stop the run. That's going to be a chief concern for the Cowboys every week out, be considering where they were last season and the things that you want to, you know, you want to try and change and get better at. But that sh at least gave me a little bit of uh, a little bit of relief as I was looking at some of these numbers and I saw that big, you know, that high mm -hmm. uh, EPA number for them offensively when it came to running. And then I was like, oh, OK, but Kyron Williams isn't there. I think for me, this is going to be yet another test this weekend for this Cowboys secondary. You started to outline in terms of some of the running game for the Los Angeles Rams. I start to look at what they have from a pass catching perspective. We mentioned Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, who's had a really good year so far. Tyler Higby, good tight end for them as well. This secondary is going to get tested quite a bit. So, Deron Bland, Stephon Gilmore, this safety group, which has had some questions so far this year. How are they going to be handling some of the things that McVay would like to do to stress that defense with Matthew Stafford throwing the football? That's, for me, what I'm going to be looking forward to most is the challenge that the secondary is going to be facing against a really good passing core or uh, wide receiver core for the Los Angeles Rams coming into this game. And timeliness is also going to matter, right? Um, we've seen this go in many different ways when it comes up for the Cowboys' defense, um, sometimes with penalties. But one thing to also know,
the Rams end up coming up big in big conversion situations. When it comes to fourth down conversions, they are tied for second in uh, fourth down conversion rate, converting on three quarters of their opportunities. And on third down, which obviously ends up being more, cons more consistent or more frequent, they rank seventh in the league in third down conversion rates, which is actually below what your, what your Cowboys are. Your Cowboys rank fourth in the league of third down conversion rate. Mm -hmm. But even then, the Rams are still not too, not wildly far behind you in converting on third down. So making sure to give yourself uh, third and long, you know, stopping on first and second down mm -hmm. and giving, putting them in third and long situations, I imagine would be helpful for you. And I see you on the TroyRed.com text line, 877-811053. Don't sleep on Tutu Atwell as well. And I, I, I don't, I don't, because he's a good wide receiver as well. They've got a lot of guys that can make a lot of plays in that receiver core. Tutu Atwell is another one of those guys that will definitely be need to be paid attention to on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, man, this this obviously this Rams team puts up a whole bunch of yards. Uh, they rank seventh, and that falls in line with all the other offensive metrics. So largely, you're just we're looking at a team that defensively is not going does not seem to be a, a an issue for you. Mm -hmm. um, offensively, we know what they're capable of when we look at the likes of Cooper Cup. When we look at the likes of Puka Nakua that we've seen over the first six seven weeks of the season. Um, especially attacking the middle of the field. Yeah. That's the rough sketch up that I get from looking at the, you know, these basic numbers um, that just trying to get ahead of this week, this week's matchup uh, on noon on Sunday with, for your Cowboys against the Rams. Some of these other numbers that are interesting coming into this game as well. The Cowboys this season tied for first in the NFL with 10 play drives have 19, 10 play drive, at least 10 plays for a drive, 19 of those. Right. So being able to sustain drives to keep that Rams offense, off the field. They're fourth in the NFL and third down conversion rate and the 48%. So again, speaking to the long drives, but also converting on third down, another way to keep that Rams offense off the field. And of course, the defense, fourth in the National Football League in scoring defense at 16.7 points per game allowed. And they are plus six in turnover differential, which is tied for second in the NFL. And what because Matthew Stafford tend to do at times turn the football over and i wonder if this help. i mean pro football focus is a sometimes uh you know attacked sometimes uh disliked um place for metrics but looking at their grades for these teams the rams uh overall are graded graded out uh fairly high but they're one of the places on offense where they do not grade very well and in fact they grade very poorly is pass blocking uh, does that sound does that sound like something that matches up with your Dallas Cowboys? I like it. The pass rush has a chance to get after Matthew Stafford this That's weekend. That's something I'm hoping to be able to see from the Cowboys, particularly because it needs this is in in a way, um, no pun intended, a get right circumstance because it does feel like the Cowboys have kind of gotten a little bit less successful uh, rushing the pass over the mm -hmm. last couple of weeks, uh, at least compared to the start of the season when it seemed like the pass rush was going to eat everybody alive all year. So I'd love I'd love if we could see the likes of. Demarcus Lawrence, Micah Parsons, uh, Sam Williams, so on and so forth. Osa Digizua, uh, get upfield and get in uh, get in Matt Stafford's kitchen and make it really difficult on him in this game. Uh, the Cowboys are healthy coming into this game, ready to go coming off of the bye week. So that's really good. Wanya Thomas was the only one on the practice report, but he was a full participant today in practice. So the Cowboys are healthy. They've got a good idea, I think, on how they want to attack. Los Angeles in terms of defensively, how they want to go after it. The question I do have, though, is in the interior a little bit because you know who still runs the middle for the Los Angeles Rams at this point, and it's Aaron Donald. And one thing that I've been concerned with over the last couple of weeks is your interior, hello, Tyler Biotish, and dealing with some of that strength in the middle. Yeah. Aaron Donald could be a big factor on Sunday uh, with his ability, of course, to not only stop the run but get after the passer as well. Tyler Piaf is going to be on notice on Sunday. Yeah, so the, this was a primer, I think, a, a numbers primer into Cowboys-Rams as we start to get a look at who the opponent is that your Cowboys are going to face on Sunday.